I'm Jeff Strasser with Microsoft. I'm here with Rethink Retail at Shop Talk 2025. Excited to share with you some spotlight sessions with myself and my colleagues and some industry experts talking about AI and retail. There's so many opportunities to use AI to change the retail experience from marketing use cases to store operations to reasoning over the massive amounts of data retailers have access to. And we're excited to share with you some of those insights and some interviews that we've been able to have here today. I hope you enjoy the videos and have a great shop talk. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Akhil. I am a client partner in the AI organization at Fractal.ai. Fractal is a global AI consulting leader and I lead AI client solutioning and market interfacing for about two thirds of our portfolio. Well, Akhil, as we get started today, one of the things that uh, you know I, I hear from clients is that as they think about going down this AI journey, data is such a critical component. Do you have any recommendations that, that you can share on how you, you encourage clients to think about their, their data environment as they go down this AI journey? Absolutely, Joe. So uh, we have a sort of unique view about data foundations in that we think you should do just as much as you need right now, simply because of the pace at which the technology is evolving. You don't know how much you need to do uh, because we think that you're going to probably need to do less as the technology becomes better and better. So let me take an example and talk about that a little bit. So most organizations would think about, hey, um, I need to set up a lot of metadata. I need to clean up the schema. Um, I need to sort of set up a lot of ETL pipelines before I can start to do anything with my data. What we are finding uh, is often true with generative AI and agentic solutions is that you can leave it to the agents to figure out a lot of the things, okay. especially as you start moving from structured data, which a lot of the retail data infrastructure is optimized for, to you know unstructured data like images, videos, documents, etc. Uh, you can get more done by just letting the AI figure it out. Um, and of course, there are situations where you need to do foundations well. You need a lot of governance, uh, areas where you have riskier decisions or decisions which might have reputational or financial risk. In those situations, for sure, you should focus on the foundations. Uh, but our belief is you go for the value first, prove out the solution, and then you can come back to it and f uh, optimize your foundations to do better with your data. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, when, when you think about examples of where clients have done this well, right? can you give us some perspective of what those examples may have looked like? What? Absolutely. So uh, see, for example, a lot of times our clients are thinking about, hey, how do I connect the insights from the data that I'm collecting from POS points in the store to the signals that I'm collecting from e-commerce, right? And often they would go about uh, setting up these data pipelines on how am I going to bring these two things together, yeah. right? In those kind of situations, for example, this could be an approach you could take where as long as you have a common customer ID, we would say just throw the schema of your e-commerce data and POS data all at the uh, Gen AI and let it figure out how it's going to join it, how it's going to disambiguate, uh, you can give it a catalog of the metrics that you care about, but let it figure out you know, how it's going to calculate those metrics on the fly. And we've seen that you know, as this technology is getting better and better, uh, you can get a lot more out of doing a lot less. That makes a lot of sense. Curious, what are some of the common challenges you're seeing right. uh, from, from clients? So there are a few typical challenges that we're seeing repeated across clients. Of course, there are idiosyncratic patterns. Uh, the first challenge is typically uh, strategic buy-in from the top management mm -hmm. and I, incident, uh, you know, incidentally we are seeing a lot of buy-in already now, uh, now that we are two years in. So that problem is kind of solving itself. Right. Uh, the second problem that we are seeing is uh, several organizations are uh, looking for the ROI too quick and too early. Mm -hmm. um, what we suggest is you know, the opportunity cost of missing out on this technology is very high. So rather than worrying about ROI on point applications, we suggest taking a portfolio approach where you invest in certain core capabilities around generative AI, agent take, create a large portfolio of experiments, and then go look for ROI in that portfolio instead of worrying about each application and whether it is yielding the value or not. What happens with that is that A, 
you build a certain set of capabilities which can already take you further than uh, the peers uh, in your industry who may not be doing that and you're able to quickly find out what things are ready to go today versus what things might be ready to go six months down the line as the technology improves in this particular dimension versus that dimension and so on. So I guess let's start big picture. Um, how do you see AI kind of you know at a, at a high level starting to influence how physical storage operate? Yeah, I, yeah it's interesting because there's probably not many areas within retail that it's not influencing. So everything from demand planning and replenishment, uh, you, you have the store experience, like we're seeing a lot of traction there. Uh, workforce, like how, how do you train? How do you understand where friction may be? Uh, how do you do forecasting of resource needs? So it's it's really like very broad across across all functions of the retail store. Yeah. So so clearly it's you know it's um, it's a focus yeah. area. It's an yeah. investment area. Yeah. Um, as your clients are starting to kind of venture in, right? They've, they have a lot of investments they've already made mm. um, from from a uh, infrastructure standpoint, whether that's mm -hmm. uh, cameras, um, yeah. you know, edge computing, yeah. uh, other beacons and sensors and devices yeah. and stores. What is the opportunity for them to leverage some of that technology that already exists today and start to use that to change the shopping experience, maybe beyond the original intent of those devices? Yeah, that's my one of my favorite questions because if you think about the, the capital expense for putting in, say, for loss prevention, the cameras, what we found is that there's so many other use cases outside of like having someone view a close, closed circuit TV. Um, you can analyze that stuff on the fly and get better signals. Where we're seeing is it's become like an evolution, right? So um, what was once used for one purpose, now we're seeing you know, I can use the same uh, cameras to look at footfall. Like how many people are coming in and, and, and having a trip? Uh, where are they spending time? Um, and, and it starts to help me understand a little better, like organically, what's going on in the store? What are the behaviors? What behaviors do I want to see more of? And I love the, the way you brought this question about it was, you know, it's like there's cameras and there's beacons and there's IoT and there's edge. And so where you see this evolving is um, the cameras may start with what is the traffic and then it may move to, and I, I know we, we've had discussions about this, like almost instrumenting the store so that it becomes like what you get with digital. Yeah. Like, can I start to understand abandonment better? Can I start to understand dwell time? When someone picks up a product and turns it around and looks at the ingredients, that's consideration. And so having the ability to instrument in store all of those behaviors is extremely valuable. And it's something yeah. I think uh, physical stores have been jealous or envious uh, for digital about for a while. So, yeah. How do you see AI technology within stores changing how the retail employee works, how they service their customer and, uh, and how they operate? Within the store, from a you know, and that could be anything from merchandising sure. to um, uh, to checkout to you know uh, incidents and and uh, um, accidents within the store. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a it's a good question. I think you know there are definitely areas when you need help, you need a, a person, right? And so um, areas where I think there's been changes, say, and and we've seen some of this here at Shop Talk. Um, smart fitting rooms or digital fitting rooms. It's a great way for you to, as a consumer, to say, hey, I, this is the wrong size, but rather than waiting for someone to come in and ask you, how are you doing, to be proactive. And then the change on the floor is someone maybe has a headpiece and they're alerted that someone in fitting room X has needs this size and this skew and they can actually remediate that quicker. And so we're seeing, you know, in that area, there's, there's a lot of interesting changes, I'd say in training and I think going back to the example of using cameras and the cameras plus digital displays as you said and media and personalizing that experience that's one piece but also cameras to understand how are employees uh, of that store operating how are they functioning and there's we used to talk in knowledge management about this idea of tacit knowledge and explicit knowledge tacit knowledge being what do you do that's more efficient that may not be in the handbook mm -hmm. What we can now do is look at the behaviors of employees via the cameras and say, hey, there's actually a better way to do this that's not in the training manual that was 
you know, that's, it looks like it's more optimal. Yep. Maybe we should actually roll that out. And so it becomes part of a training curriculum and that sort of thing. So we've heard a lot of buzz, obviously, about AI over the last couple of years. And in retail in particular, you know, it's really kind of taking the industry by storm. And one thing I would be curious to get your perspective on is what is really the difference when we talk about agentic AI versus other AI use cases? Yeah, I think agentic AI is really the promise of AI that everyone talks about. Um, agentic AI essentially means autonomous AI. So it's AI agents who can conduct and automate tasks on behalf of users without human intervention. So if you think about pricing analysis, uh, promotions, inventory management, they can automate all of those tasks or automate things like personalization without the need for humans to conduct those sure. tasks from scratch, right? But they can also conduct those tasks with human in the loop. So they can uh, do all of the heavy lifting in terms of reaching into existing machine learning systems that retailers might already have, but make it easy for employees to essentially interact with those uh, systems using human conversational language. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for that. I think that, you know, that with all that's going on with AI, um, some of the terminology, you know, gets confusing at times. So I appreciate you uh, yeah. giving that <laughs> distinction. If you can comment on, you know, what are some of the uh, use cases that you've seen with Agentic AI, specifically in retail, and how have yeah. they delivered success back to the business? So I, this might be controversial, but I would say that a lot of the promised hasn't been realized yet. So leaders in retail, the Amazons, the Walmarts, the Sainsbury's of the world, they're exploring the ability to develop these autonomous agents to handle things like pricing, promotions, inventory, supply chain management. Um, those are the core use cases to solve for. I think what we see out the gate, especially with the third party agents, the enterprise agents on the market, whether it's through um, Salesforce Agent Force or Microsoft Copilot Studio, um, what we're seeing is the ability for those agents to be applied to the immediate use cases of marketing, customer service support, um, things like promotions or pricing support. Sure. But I think it's still very much early days where the impact hasn't yet fully been measured. Sure. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So we know that AI can, can certainly help improve customer satisfaction. Um, can you give some best practices in terms of how organizations should look at, to deploy, knowing that trust is a key element and yeah. uh, maybe talk about that? Yeah, any organization that's implementing any sort of AI capability needs to think about responsible AI practices and essentially lawyer up. Think about how you're, how you're going to tackle that from both a user experience perspective, also an organizational perspective. And if customers or employees trust your tooling, they're going to adopt that tooling. Um, what we see is the ability to train the AI to come back with essentially citations or reasoning behind their recommendations. So if you've used um, Google recently, Google Gemini, which is now integrated into the main Google search homepage, if you make a, if you do a search, right, the results that you're seeing come through from Gemini have cross-linking back to the sources that are uh, informing the results that Gemini is giving. Sure. That's a really simple example of how trust can uh, be brought to bear for an end user. Sure. So, being able to cite your reasoning, being able to explain to the end user, these are the recommendations that we're making and why, I think goes a really long way. Do you think that because of that, it makes it feel more authentic to the... In, I think that's in, true. I think that's true. And if you think about agentic, right, you're also in most, in most cases thinking about employees, right? Employees that are using those tools within an organization. And so you want to build that trust and want to build that buy-in to the tools. So I think it's even more important, less that they wouldn't trust the responses, but more to show the value of what the AI is bringing. And sure. if you can tie it back to, hey, we're pulling this from this data source or this from this external study or this from this sort of uh, annual report that you put together a year ago, I think it builds that confidence sure. in the tool. Sure. So across retail operations from uh, supply chain to customer service, you know, we're seeing this is being reshaped by by AI. That's um, right. How is it Accenture helping brands yeah. uh, integrate agentic AI and and do that transformation? Yeah. So at Accenture, we're in this unique position, right, where you're uh, working really closely with all of our client partners who typically have a pretty diverse technical and data landscape, and so. 
what we're trying to do is to um, partner with them and developing our own suite of agents, essentially, that can plug into any enterprise data source. So it makes it easy for our clients to kind of put together a custom suite or almost like an agentic AI layer atop their, the sort of uh, very diverse range of enterprise platforms in which they play to fulfill those specific tasks that they have for their businesses. So in this new role, two months in, how are you thinking about Sitecore's solutions and what they're able to offer by way of AI? And what do you think you're the most excited about? Oh, so. I'm really excited about the way AI is just enabling all of the solutions, right? So Sitecore is a leader in content. Yes. So the entire content creation, all the way through the, the, the delivery of that experience. Um, and AI empowers the marketer all the way across that journey. So it is enabling every single piece of the content lifecycle. It's enabling connect collaboration, orchestration. Um, it's just supercharging marketing. I mean, it really is revolutionizing what marketers are able to do. I love that. And I mean, we talked about it a little bit earlier. And as you think about it from your new lens and your vantage point of the value and the strategy around that, and with AI infused in all of the parts of that ecosystem and that life cycle, how do you think about value when you're thinking of transforming that experience? It's a huge challenge, right? What's the ROI and how do you think about it? Because the content life cycle and your entire marketing operations, there's so many moving parts. Um, and when you're thinking about it, you have to look at it holistically, right? You have to look at it from the beginning all the way through because if you start tinkering with one area, you know, it might be really valuable if you can suddenly create campaign variations on the fly, but if you have to then go translate them into 70 different languages and that's all manual, you're not adding value, right? You're just I don't gonna, want you're, that job. <laughs> you're just gonna have a <laughs> bottleneck. So, so you need to be thinking about the entire process um, end to end, and you need to be thinking about where you might be creating bottlenecks, and you need to be thinking about what are your, what's the value you're getting in terms of three things. So you need to think about in terms of revenue generation or cost savings or time to market. And as you're playing with AI, you can, you might get a little combination of each of those things, but you, you need to just identify what those metrics are and start looking at it that way before you even do anything. Otherwise you're just gonna waste your time. Oh, and we don't have time for that. No. So one of my favorite topics is personalization. And I know Sitecore has some really unique offerings that can help identify different ways in which you can have a personalized experience across that entire journey that your customer is gonna have. Yep. What are you most excited about? What are you seeing? Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's a big question because we have personalization and, and the AI enablement all the way through. So let's start at, let's start at the beginning of the content creation cycle, right? So. If you are um, looking to create new campaigns or new assets based on things that you've done in the past, um, our, AI, our AI, we develop with you, right? So this is a- this is a, Match made in heaven. A, exactly. So our AI will allow a marketer to really take a look at past campaigns and past assets and um, evaluate whether or not something worked or not, and then be able to take that and tweak it, right? So. Um, there like a is feedback loop. Like a feedback loop. I love that. And and the content creation is there to help you as well, right? It's like it's your co-pilot. So we're not creating content that uh, is just going to go out into the world. Yep. You are the person who sits there with it and takes a look at it and then can say, okay, I like this because you've got my brand voice right, because that's part of what we did is we trained it to yep. make sure you got the right brand voice. Um, but you can make the tone a little more formal or you can make the, you can, you can do some tweaking, right? Yeah. Um, so now you've created that content and now you want to get it out into the world. Um, when you're actually building your website, you can do something similar and, and you can play around with that. And we have built in personalization already into the, in the platform. Incredible. AI is now just taking it to the next level, right? So um, now you can have variants. If, you know, I, I have this page, I'm going to tweak it a little bit and I'm going to translate it. And now I have a couple different. So all the variants um, iterations is now done for you. So it saves you an incredible amount of time. Wow. Well, yeah. thank you so much. I love the conversation. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank Very you. Fun.